That's an interest. That is a cool shot there. Oh my god. Now this one is amazing. This is some weird ass photoshopping I, stum I stumbled upon in miraculous simplicity. Dark, ominous clouds, this blood red sky is a scary, scary thing. Oh my god, right, I've just gone on far too much there. Okay, hi everyone, here's new photo critique. This one is uh, for Joshua Lucas. Uh, and he says that he is a young student photographer. Uh, he finished studying a while ago, but you never stop learning and he will remain a student forever. Uh, since leaving college, I have had various photography roles, mainly event portrait jobs. Uh, photography largely remains a hobby for me, but I'm always seeking uh, ways to improve. Okay, cool. I like this guy. Uh, I want to send you some of my travel photography uh, as it is what I enjoy shooting most. Of course you do because you get to go on holiday and say it's a job. Easy. Um, okay, it uses the uh, Canon 400D with the 50mm and the 7300. Um, and he also shoots a fair bit of film as well. Okay. Uh, Josh says, uh, I, Joshua Lucas, gives permission for Don Bower to use photos on his uh, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Um, if you could give a shout out for my YouTube channel, ah, oh, Josh, you've got a YouTube channel, that'd be appreciated. Okay, I'll put this on the link down below. In fact, I'll just click on it, see if there's anything interesting on it. Just this is how I spent my bank holiday Monday, in London, with friends, thinking about something small. I got on the underground. Something small, and took some photos of my friends' faces. And Natalie Portman. Found an awesome busker, this guy guy was outside on his phone. They had exhibits from Emil. Okay, Hope. I like this guy already. Frogs love to rave. Okay, uh, Joshua. Uh, initially wondering what your voice was, but then I just love your actual video there. That's quite good. Uh, okay, oh, you've got loads of videos up as well. Okay, everyone, that's uh, quite interesting. Right, anyway, let's go on and uh, destroy your photos. Okay, first photo. Uh, there's a lady in my mirror. That is that's a cool photo. That's very cool. It's uh, it looks like it's a giant water drop uh, on the ground where, but it's not. It's, it's a mirror. Okay, if you hadn't told me that that was a mirror, I would just think this is some weird ass photoshopping where there's a, a drip on the ground, a, a massive drip, um, and you've photoshopped a woman in it. But is that real? Really? Is that your mirror? I don't know. That's cool. If that is, that, that's very cool. Okay, like if you don't want to say, uh, down to one side and you've got the concrete. What would be quite cool maybe is if there was something on that road, uh, the bit which we've seen there, which was in some way referencing to a bicycle lane or something like that. Because uh, that moment is, is a big lot of dead space, which would be fine if you're writing something on it, maybe put a poem down the side or something like that. Um, but there it is just dead. Um, so... Would it work if it was just like, like that? Probably not, because you wouldn't tell that it's a road. So yeah, you do need the the road there. But I just think because it's a, a woman on her bike and there's also lots of people biking, it'd be quite good if there's something on that road to make it realise that it is the road, or there's, or even if there's somebody walking past a foot or something, uh, going on there. That'd be quite cool. Okay, and you've uh, given us a little quote here to understand the miraculous simplicity of this image. You have to experience the traffic in Ho. Ho Chi Ming City. Uh, here's a link. Uh, okay, oh, let's have a look at this. Okay, brilliant. You're giving me links to videos. Okay, brilliant. Oh my god. I see what you mean. Ah. Okay, I, I, I concur. Miraculous simplicity. Uh, okay, okay. I'll, again, I'll put that on a link to somebody uh, on the on the video. Um, cool. Okay. Yes. Very good. Well done. Well done. Um, conceptually, yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll, I'll, I'm just going to leave it there. I think that's a cool shot. Uh, it's conceptual. It's simple. It's clear. Uh, it's very well done. Okay, I like that one. Well done. Well, uh, okay, now, if it was on a photography website, would I stop and look at it? Yes, because I would think, what photoshopping has this person done? Um, but realising that that's actually just your mirror, that that's very good. Very good focus. Okay, well done. Okay, next one. Okay, so the next one is the Hanoi Street. 
And uh, what you're seeing in this shot is that it encapsulates the country and the journey that you had. It's a typical scene with lots of things happening, um, but there's no one focal point which is disappointing. Okay, what I would say is I agree, like this photo here really is what I would imagine a, a Vietnamese uh, street to look like, but it's like, you know, there, there, there's people on their bikes, there's people walking around with their funny little hats on, but it's... If I lived there, like to me as a tourist, I think that's, wow, okay, that's what this place looks like. But A is a recent photo, because everyone's on their scooters. I would like to see it in colour. I'd like to see what the actual colour of the place is like. Also, the fact is, there's because as you said, there's no one point of uh, interest. But there isn't, at that point, then there's no point of interest. I'm not really interested in these people randomly on their bikes, this little woman... Uh, with their stuff there, that's not very interesting either. It needs, it any photo of a location, I would say, still needs a point of interest. If it's just a general snapshot, then this is fine, is it just a general snapshot? But if you're trying to say that you are a travel photographer, or you're wanting to do travel photography, this is really just a snapshot which anyone down any street at any time of day could have got. There's no particular special thing about the lighting, about the time of day, or about anything that's happening in that street. There needs to be more of an event happening for it to really grab my attention. So yeah, I think it's just, that is, to me, a snapshot. Let's see your next one. Because this one is your one saying, waiting for the catch. And let's see what you've written about it. As you said, described by Jeremy Clarkson as a deserted ribbon of perfection, uh, the high van pass supplied us with breathtaking scenery. This lone fisherman caught my eye as he squatted still as can be, uh, head to the water, watch, uh, waiting for a catch. Okay, uh, in terms of composition, uh, you're going for the rule of thirds down there, you've got a point of interest at the bottom, but for me it's really... Again, it's not really working. Okay, you've gone for black and white, which is fine, but it's it's not really something which is grabbing my attention in any way. I don't know whether that's just because you've said that this place that you went to had um, I, the most breathtaking scenery. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing any of that breathtaking scenery here. This could effectively be a man on any rock in any Asian coastline. There's nothing that's telling me about the breathtaking scenery at all. You know, the, the water is just kind of grey, the person's looking away, we're not seeing him, and we're not seeing the kind of a, a landscape or anything, it's just a bunch of water. It could be on a river, it could be on the sea, there's nothing really to give me an idea of where it is and why this photo is special. Maybe a lower down position so we can see it all the way to the horizon, something like that I think would be good. But at the moment, technically it's got the right bits there, uh, Composition wise, yeah, it's there, but there's just nothing really making me want to go, wow, that's an interesting photo. I wish I was there. And it's not even making me have a story to it either. Like the man down there is just such a small, insignificant part of the story. There's more of a story in those three rocks down there than there is in the man, I feel. So again, I'm just not getting that photo from you. Okay, let's try your next one. The sun has had its day. Okay, this one I like. I like this one a lot. There's an amazing, bright, huge sun that you've done uh, and capturing the people. What I would say is, though, the sun and the people are totally distracted by the fact that there's this bright orangey bit up here. This is, is of no interest to the image. I would say cut the image off about, in fact, there. That's the kind of shot I would say would be a lot better, where it's just the sun, these dark ominous clouds, this blood red sky, and then these people out in the still water, but you can't even see to the end of the water, you're kind of thinking, it could be a total storm in the horizon. That's an interest, that is a cool shot there. But what you've given me, where you go all the way out, is just distracted by this lighter bit up here. It totally unbalances the photo. So, good capture, good timing, but crop that right down, or just get a shot where you, or if you could have gone back to the shot and get it where it's just something like that. That would be cool. Okay, next one. Now uh, this one is amazing. I love this one. You said this one was, where is this one? Um, shot in an open grave cemetery I, stum I stumbled upon in Thailand. 
Oh, Christ, I sure as hell wouldn't want to stumble across that. Um, this was a quick snapshot uh, as I was getting scared. Fair enough, I understand why you'd be getting scared. It's a scary, scary thing. Um, the angle of shot is a touch disconcerting as it slopes away to the right, uh, but I think that adds to an uneasy nature of the image. I would totally agree with you. Uh, that is a, a, a brilliant subject to take a photo of. Scary as hell. The position that you've got is really is looking down at me, um, and it's a really kind of I'm in control and just it's brilliant. Um, what I would also like to see you saying this is your snapshot. I would say this is probably your best shot out of all. It looks really good. Okay, the the background blurriness is a bit weird. It's all kind of little circles, but that may be just something to do with the cave wall that it's in, or or whatever the open grave is. That's just the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Um, again, this is. Really cool. It looks like he's looking straight at me. I would love to see this with some off-camera flash because this is just uh, with your natural lighting that was there. I think if you had some off-camera flash that would be really super creepy. Okay, good work. Good work on that last one. Okay, and the last thing you say, would you say that there is any money to be made from travel photography uh, such as this? Uh, and if so, how would you go about doing it? Okay, Harry, I would say at the moment not really. Uh, the, the photos they've sent me have looked like snapshots and have also been kind of the cliched uh, shots of sunsets and stuff like that. So at the moment I would say you need to go on a heck of a lot more holidays and get a heck of a lot more shots. But to be a travel photographer you have to be a landscape photographer, an architectural photographer, a, peop a portrait photographer. You have to be open to get, you know, if if you go to a place and you don't get a single photo of a, one of the locals there, then you're really missing out on a massive point. I know a couple of photographers who have travelled the world and their shots are amazing because they've really got in touch with the people that they've gone and lived with or, or the location that they've gone and moved into. So get some bravery pills and head up to the people, the locals, they may not speak your language, they not know what you look like uh, or like what you look like and they may be a bit strange but get shots of the local people um, and if you think that you're going to be able to sell your shots to for example Lonely Planet or National Geographic don't expect that at all you know the people that are doing it for those magazines have usually been tr doing travel photography for 10 years or so and they are fully established in the market at the moment anyone can pick up a camera and can take a few shots but if you want to make yourself different from the from the rest of the people taking snapshots then get involved with the communities of the locations that you're going to be going and taking travel photography of get the photos that people think wow i would like to go somewhere to see if i could get a photo almost as good as that you know not somewhere where they say oh i could get a photo like that down at my local beach or i could go dig up a grave and get a photo like that get ones where you go i need to go to that location to see if I can find the people or the buildings or the scenery like that, which I can't get anywhere else. Oh my god, right, I've just gone on far too much there. Um, but yeah, uh, that's my little advice for you. Okay, good work, Josh. Joshua Lucas. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, and just before I go, I just wanted to let you know that I'm getting very close to finishing the book. This was a printout I did uh, a wee while ago, uh, kind of January, and uh, I thought, right, I really need to properly work on it. Here, I was only up to about, I think about 70 or 80 pages. I've now got up to the full 120 pages, and I'm slowly printing them out and doing the final corrections to them again. So uh, it's just trying to make sure it's all looking as good as possible. So the book, fingers crossed, will be out fairly soon, once I've done like, like loads, loads of corrections like that. That's just one of the pages out of 120. So, I think, see if any of you are planning on making a book in the future. It's not a quick job. Well, I have done some uh, photography books in the past where it's just been the photos. But here I'm trying to give you all the details and information and have all the stuff correct. And that's taking forever. Uh, so yeah, just let you know that will be coming soon. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Um, and uh, there'll be links on it later on. Okay, cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.